Welcome back. I'm thrilled to introduce you to our next guests are a powerhouse of four women who are all involved in a new book, Moments That Matter. We're going to talk to them first about what brought them from birth until now, or maybe at least morning coffee. And then we're going to focus in a second segment on the book itself and what that means for all of us. So let me first welcome Erin Saxton. Thank you so much for being here. Erin is a media strategist, a former TV producer with Barbara Walters and The View and a number of others. And I have Kate Butler, who is the creator of the Inspired Impact book series, which in fact published the book we're going to discuss later, among other credentials. Her daughter, Bella, who is sitting there in front of this gorgeous Tuscan sunset behind them. And Bella is a multi best selling author herself, a public speaker, and oh, in the eighth grade. So if you've ever felt like you haven't done anything with your life, now you're going to feel it even more. And then we've got Patty Aubrey. A success and results coach, Patty, is a brand maker. She is the business manager and the brains behind the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And if you're all now looking over at your bookshelf saying, oh, I've got a few of those on my shelf. Yes, that's the series we're talking about. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. I'm thrilled to have you all here. I know Bella and Kate are Zooming in from Ireland. We'll talk more about that. Uh, Patty's in California, and Erin is in New Jersey, and I'm in Maryland, and this is the beauty of remote television, and we're so grateful that you're all here. Erin, let's start with you, since you brought us all together. I would love to know the secret behind being Erin Saxton, and what gets you up in the morning, and how did you get to where you are right now? I don't know if anyone wants to know the secret. Sound bite. Six <laughs> <Yeah>. sound bites. <laughs> the secret of being Aaron Saxton, that sounds like, you know, a bad country music song. So, <laughs> you know, for me, I um I am a go-getter. And so I was bar was early on at an internship at Good Morning America. And then I worked through the ranks and quickly became part of Barbara Walters private production company. And so growing up, I'm 53 now and growing up, we, um, I would always see like Barbara Walters specials. And it was those three interviews before the Emmys or the Oscars. And so I eventually became that one of uh, that eight person production team, one of them. And I traveled with Barbara and we really became like she was my mentor. She taught me everything. She taught me how to be comfortable being uncomfortable, um, which has served me very well because I get myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations. Um, I eventually climbed up through the ladder and worked on many different shows like Good Morning America and Rosie and a Wall Street Journal station, and then was one of the original launching producers of The View. And I left there and started a media public relations marketing company sold that and now here I am and I get to work with all of these people in the newest company I run 11 communications which is already like 17 years old so I'm really like 207 years old <laughs> in I work should, years yeah in work years yeah I get that I think that's part of the key for all of us I think there's definitely a thread between anyone who has lived long enough and that kind of is the key to success is you got to live long enough to follow the trail because it never is a straight line, is it? Never. And we don't think about that in terms necessarily of the person who's behind the scenes helping us be successful. And we all have lots of people who are working on our behalf. It takes, it seriously takes a village. At least it takes a very talented team, which I know you guys are as well. And with that in mind, I'm going to move and ask Kate, what inspired you to create um, this whole book series and, and what brought you to where you are right now? Wow. Okay. So, um, goodness, I remember graduating college and all I wanted to do was move out to sunny California from the East coast. I just wanted to be like Heather Locklear or on Melrose place. That's really all I wanted out of life. And if I could do that, I was smooth sailing. So <laughs> I moved out to, I ended up in orange County 
where I lived for many, many years. And I started climbing that corporate ladder out there. And I found myself at 25 years old, I'm running this multi-million dollar office. And I just continued to literally climb from there. Um, I was living my best life. Here I am, I'm making a ton of money, right? Like I'm in California, I have like zero responsibilities, you know, like come Friday at five until, you know, Monday again at 8 a.m. And, you know, just really living life. And I went on to get married and I went on to have uh, two beautiful daughters. Bella is my oldest daughter uh, sitting with me here. And I remember this, this one pivotal day where I'm standing in the foyer of my house and I'm looking around and I'm going, oh my gosh, like wh what have I created? Like my life, if, if <laughs> It felt like the world of the weight was like on my chest because I'm like, oh my God, everything is just fine. Like that feeling of like, like nothing, like nothing is exciting. Nothing is great. Like everything is literally like the, the worst thing in the world for me is boring. Like I was like, everything is so boring. And I remember reading the kids' stories like at nighttime to, at bed, and I would always change the ending of the stories. I never liked, I really never liked how they ended. I was like, this is just like not a story I want my kids to know. And so I'm like, let's spice this up a little bit. Let's like, you know, get a new story in here. And I would always make up new stories. And I had this thought in the nursery one night, I'm like, I should write a book. Like I should write a children's book. I've always loved writing. And I thought, gosh, wow, could I? What if I could do that? Like, I would love to be an author one day. And as quick as it went in, it went out. And I was like, oh, I couldn't do that. That's not for me. It's for that. It's for these people that can't write books because I'm changing their story, but it's not, it's not for me, right? And I went, oh my gosh, I'm looking, you know, around the nursery and I'm putting my daughter in for bed. I have my other daughter across the hallway and I'm going, holy moly, wait, like would I ever tell them that they couldn't do it? And I knew that if I didn't, make a move then. Like if I did not do something, take a risk, take a leap, go after something in this boring life I was living, like how could I ever expect them to go after their dream? You know, there's nothing wrong with that straight path if it's what you want. But I realized in that moment, it's like once you know something, you can't unknow it. Like I had that, that sense of awareness in that moment when I looked around, like it was, it's been fine up until now but it cannot go on this way any longer. Like I was not put on this earth for this right now in this moment. Like it's been fine up until now, but now that I know different, I have to be different. I have to act different. And I had, to, I knew I had to do that for them. I had to go first. So I didn't even care if the book got published. I didn't even care if it was successful. I just wanted to do something and show them that you gotta, you gotta go for it. It, it was in going for it. That really was the point. Um, I actually ended up meeting Patty Aubrey at this point in my life, uh, by the grace of God. She was a literal gift from God in my life, introduced by a friend. We were at a retreat together uh, that Patty was hosting, and she changed my life in those four days, literally changed my entire life. She changed my perspective. She changed what I thought was possible for life. And she actually showed me the path of how I could get to where I wanted to go. Uh, I wrote my first children's book and it ended up being a bestseller for over a hundred weeks straight. And it literally opened the floodgates to everything that you now, you know, kind of talked about and um, about the publishing and the books. Uh, we've published close to 500 authors now um, and have this amazing book series that we're here to talk about today. My daughters and I write children's books together um, and we've it's it's really been amazing what has happened from that place. So uh, that is what got me here today. <laughs> that and a couple of cups of coffee and we are all good to go. <laughs> Bella, how do you, you know, growing up in a house where this is, the just the day-to-day -day operational level right so it was obvious from the beginning that you were going to be a superstar and now here you are so tell us a little bit about you all right i'm bella butler i am 13 going in eighth grade and i'm a three-time number one international best-selling author and this whole thing started when my mom went to publish our first children's book more than mud and not even when she was publishing it, when she was creating it, she, I was at the age where I could like, you know, see the differences between colors and like be able to name one and say which one I liked better. 
So she would ask me like, you know, which illustration do you like better for this page? And I'd be like, that one. I like that one better. Put that one in the book. And she would be like, what do you think, like, you know, this character should act like? Who do you want to base it off of? I'd be like, well, I do have like, you know, some really good friends and they do like the super cool activity. We should make her do that activity. And we just kind of kept going like that. And then the book got published. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. I want to do that. So I kept giving my mom all these different stories, all these crazy different stories that just came straight from my imagination. I don't even, I was just creating story after story. She was like, no, that one, I don't know if we can turn that into a book like that one. Just keep thinking. Maybe you'll get some like a really good one, one of these days. <laughs> Cause I was like story after story after story. So finally I come up with a story about these uh, magical rabbits who have these magical rainbow powers and they like paint the sky and the colors of the earth and she's like, like I love that story but we have another character and she's not a bunny rabbit but I can I can make your story with my character is that good I was like yes 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 so Maggie Mudd our character from the first book became our character in our second book more than magic and I became a number one international best-selling author at the age of five I was holding the book in my hands. I was like, wow, like, this is, this is amazing. And uh, I got to skip school and go to other schools to read my book to all these other people, uh, all these other children. And we, they were older than me. I was like six or seven when we started doing it. And I was reading my book to all these kids who were older than me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like a celebrity right now. <laughs> So then uh, a few years later, we wrote and illustrated our second children's book, or well, your third, my second children's book, Believe Big. And it was me, my mom, my sister, and our artist friend, Chloe Helms. And we were the authors and illustrators of this book. And again, we got to go to schools. We got to read it. And it was just amazing. I was in fourth grade when that got published. And I was just so excited and so happy. It was just the best ever. And I still, with Moments That Matter and all the other things that I'm hoping to do, I just want to inspire children and tweens and teens, people who aren't quite yet adults, who are looking at adulthood and being like, that is my opportunity to go out and do all the things. You don't have to wait till then. You can do it now while you're still young and you can continue to build on that as you get older. But right now, now is your time to shine, no matter what age you are. So you can be young, you can be older. It doesn't matter how, like, where you are, just you can do it and you can shine bright. That is what I want to share with the world. I can only imagine right this minute from our viewers' perspective, because also this is what goes through my head. I have a 14-year-old nephew and a 12-year-old niece, and I would love for them to be able to share their stories with someone like you and then partner up and, and be able to inspire not only tweens and teens, but in fact, you inspire me and I'm sure you're inspiring all of us greatly. So thank you for stepping into the opportunity that's been presented to you because not every child could, even though the mother, even though your mother in particular has shown you the way, not every child would step up and do it. So your sister and you are very, very fortunate and we're thrilled to have you here with us. Patty, I know you are the lynch and the connector, the linchpin and the connecting dot between all of us now. So tell us a little bit about you. When I was younger, I worked for my father's company as well. And um, so I had a, a little bit of a business background. And when I got done with school, in San Diego, I moved to Santa Barbara. I started working for a tech company and I hated it. I hated it. I was always in trouble. It was run by two guys from Cuba. Women were seen and not heard. I was out of place. And so I decided to leave, I moved back to LA. Actually, my boss that was at the tech company said, hey, I'm leaving to become a Buckminster Fuller trainer. You should come to my workshop. It's like $249. You know, I'm only making $1,400 a month. That's that's a lot, but I did it anyway. And I came up with a goal. I'm going to make $25,000 by December 31st, 1989. And I'd never set a goal. I didn't even know what a goal was, which is really crazy in today's world. And so I moved to LA and I see this bold, bold ad in the paper that says $25,000 a year. That's bold. And it says there any secretary wanted. I'm like, 
I never want to be a secretary. And my father was adamant that I be a secretary, that I learned to type. But I'm like, no, my secretary was like, nope, I'm a type. I was a typist in the army. You got to learn to type. So I went in for the interview. I didn't get the job. A couple months later, the people called me back said, I, I think we want you after all. So I said, okay, it's going to cost you 30. And he said, okay, it was Jack Canfield at the time before chicken soup. And so what I realized when I got there and I literally got to the job and he's like, okay, I'm on the road for three weeks. And I thought, oh my gosh, no one's telling me what to do. And I started going through all the computers and everything else and realized he's spending all this crazy money on stupid things. And I could network max and I could redo everything for half the cost. And so he came back. I'm like, I redid the whole office. Your slides are now in PowerPoint, which he was using crayons. I said, and now I'm the vice president of operations. And he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first time that I really felt free because I, I didn't know where I was meant to be. I just knew that I couldn't live in a cubicle. I didn't know what it would look like. I didn't know what it was going to be like to actually be part of something bigger. And so that's sort of what got me going. And then of course, Chicken Soup for the Soul happened. We published 230 or 40 titles. And the thing that was interesting is that people would call me and say, Hey, we want you to come and speak in front of 10,000 women at this Coliseum. Like who says no to that? And I'd say, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, as the president of chicken soup for the soul enterprises, I'm too busy because I was a chicken because <laughs> I was afraid to be seen. And I couldn't even say if I got in the car with someone, they said, what do you do? I would say he's a New York times bestselling author. I could not own what I was doing. I was a professional hider. And then one day I decided that that needed to change. And then how did you do that? Well, my mom got really sick and she made me promise on her deathbed that I would stop hiding and that I would show up and be seen and take credit where credit's due. And as scary as it was, I did it. It was an out-of-body experience. I'm not going to lie, like to show up and actually be the person like Aaron was saying, do you want to be famous? I didn't really want to be famous, but I was starting to get resentful that I wasn't getting acknowledged at the level I wanted to. And so instead of staying in that resentful mode, which is not good for Botox, I decided that I would just give myself permission to be my obnoxious inner self and go for what I wanted and start saying no and start asking for what I wanted as well. And I did. And, and it paid off in the end. And I call it free Botox, giving yourself permission to put yourself first, as Kate was saying earlier. Absolutely. And thanks for doing that for you, because obviously now you've also created the opportunity for these other ladies to do it as well. And for hundreds of other people to do it, hundreds, maybe thousands of others to do it as well. So thank you, ladies, for leading us in so well, because the fact that it you are all together and have shared so much together and that are now working together on this Moments That Matter book, we're going to come back in just a minute after our commercial break and talk about the book and how that all came together. So stay with us. We'll be right back. 